And this is part of Daniel's great prophecy. He says in Daniel 4.35, all the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, but he does according to his will in the host of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, and no one can ward off his hand or say to him, what have you done? Daniel 4.35. And so what he does is he does according to his determinative will, and he does that in which he has decreed beforehand. Our Lord Jesus, for example, he went to the cross. And he did that, and he went to the cross according to the decretive will of God. It was his determining will, his decretive will. It is that which he established from before the foundation of the world in the councils of eternity. He determined that Jesus would go to the cross before the foundations of the world. He is the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. So you've got that on one aspect that we need to consider when we talk about the context of prayer. The other is not the decree of will, it's the preceptive will of God. What is that? The preceptive will of God. That's what we see in scriptures by and large. The preceptive will of God is that which pleases him. But understand something, unlike his decretive will, the preceptive will of God does not always come to pass. His preceptive will pleases him, but often his preceptive will is not carried out, and that displeases him. We can't do anything contrary to his decretive will. He's declared that, he's decreed that, and that decree of will determines all things that are going to pass. But before we get further into this topic, when we consider this, and by the way, this is a big topic. We're going to be here for a few weeks. But we're just going to take our time and work through this because it's really, really important. It would really help us to understand prayer in the context of the will of God. What does that really mean? What does that look like? I want to begin by talking about how that relates to his will with respect to nature, <coughs> the laws of nature, because, and really the reason is because one of the answers is the foreseen problem to answer prayer. And that should always be against the backdrop of his, what we refer to his immutability, meaning he, he is unchangeable. His unchangeableness would be the way that we would say it. immutability is unchangeableness. In fact, as a side note, let me just make this comment. Prayer changes things. It doesn't change God. It affects his actions, not his person, not his principles. God is unchangeable. He's immutable. However, his actions may change based on the purposes that he has. And by the way, prayer affects means of the ends. Mark that and mark it well. Prayer affects the means, not the ends. We could say that God's eternal and immutable purposes involve the means and the ends. The means and the ends. And so as a consequence, it may be perfectly within God's will for a creature to ask in order for that his ends would be accomplished when we say, your will be done. We pray in Jesus' name. We'll talk about that. And really what becomes obvious when we say something like that is that prayer doesn't affect means, but is the means to an unchangeable end. And that's a really important concept for us to understand. Prayer doesn't affect the means. It is the means to an unchangeable changeable end. Let me put it to you from a human perspective, if I may. Prayer may change God's actions and his means. It's also designed to change his creatures. Prayer, said this way, is specifically designed to change us. It draws us near to God. 
like the illustration of being stranded at sea, a lifeline is being thrown, allows us to kind of be drawn closer to the vessel. I want you to turn to a couple passages right now, beginning by turning to Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. We're going to start there. We're going to go to a couple of passages in the book of Jeremiah. And I want to just, this is just kind of to set the introduction a little bit. And I want you to notice that there are occasions where your prayers, or in this case, prophets' prayers, are not compatible with God's will. In Jeremiah 7, let's look at one verse, and we're going to go to chapter 11. Jeremiah 7, verse 16, in particular. As for you, do not pray for this people, and do not lift up cry or prayer for them, and do not intercede with me, for I do not hear you. Do you see that? Okay, keep that in mind. Now turn over to Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah 11. In a similar way, the prophet is given this instruction. 11.11 11 is where we're going to start. Jeremiah 11.11. 11. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am bringing disaster on them. Stop right there. The Lord says that. You better make sure you understand what side you're on. Think about those words. Behold, I am bringing disaster on them, which, watch this now, they will not be able to escape. So they will cry to me, yet I will not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, will go and cry to the gods to whom they burn incense. They will surely not save them in the time of their disaster. For your gods are as many as your cities of Judah, and as many as the streets of Jerusalem are the altars you have set up to the shameful thing, altars to burn incense to Baal. Therefore, do not pray for this people, nor lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not listen when they call to me because of their what? Disaster. That's stunning. That's shocking language. Go over to Jeremiah 14. Two more verse, two more sections of text. Jeremiah 14 and Jeremiah 15. I want you to get the sense of this kind of before we, we dig into this. Jeremiah 14, pick up in verse 11. So the Lord said to me, do not pray for the welfare of this people. When they fast, I'm not going to listen to their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and grain offering, I'm not going to accept them. Rather, I'm going to make an end of them by the sword, famine, and pestilence. One more verse, Jeremiah 15. Verse 1. Jeremiah 15, 1 says this. And the Lord said to me, Even though Moses and Samuel were to stand before me, my heart would not be with this people. Send them away from my presence and let them go. Prayer has been described by someone as an interchange with an ideal companion. Prayer has been described as an interchange with an ideal companion. So when we think about prayer and the will of God, I want to keep a few of these things in mind. Someone said if it's really true that prayer is interchange with an ideal companion, then it must be our primary concern, our best resource, our most skilled art, our greatest joy. If it is not the blessing that is suggested by that remark, then prayer is self-deceit. If God is not, and if we pray, we do not really pray to anyone, then surely we are self-deceived, end quote. And it's true. And it's true that in the context of prayer, two irreconcilable kind of worldviews come into conflict. Those who believe that there's a God that believe God exists, that God is above, that he's transcendent, that he's above <laughs> creation. That we have the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, in which we may bring our petitions because of what Christ has done for us. And then there are those who believe there is no God. There's not a God that 
prayer would even affect anything. It's a useless endeavor. It's nothing more than just speaking words in the air and then kind of just floating in the ether. Nothing but self-defeat. But more importantly, self-deceance. Why are skeptics so annoyed at prayer? Why are skeptics so annoyed at people who pray? Prayer is, by and large, a universal act. And it's certainly true, remarkably true, really. But even those who don't know the true God, they still pray. Those who do not have any relationship with Jesus Christ still pray. Some who make no profession of Christ talk about prayer. In fact, some of your friends might say something like, well, I'm going to pray about it when they are just as far from God as a stick or a stone. And I'm sure you know that. They talk about prayer, they discuss prayer, they mention prayer. They say things that are kind of built into man. They, the, the idea of prayer is an intrinsic 